Hello and welcome to Mosaic Church Online. We're so pleased that you're able to join us this morning, albeit online, virtually. We're so pleased and so happy that you can gather with us as we have our time of worship together. I'd like to encourage you to help us widen our reach through liking the link, through sharing the link, or through just engaging in the conversation on YouTube, on Facebook, however it may be. Help us widen our reach and with that, more people will be drawn in to Mosaic Church Online and more people will hear the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We're about to go in to a time of worship. But before we do that, I'd like to read some words from Francis Chan and then I'm going to share Psalm 98. Francis Chan says, isn't it a comfort to worship a God we cannot exaggerate? In other words, He's indescribable. There's no words to describe how great, how incredible our God is. There's no words in the English Oxford Dictionary that can describe him. So instead, let's raise our hands. Let's raise a tambourine. Let's raise a saucepan, whatever we can get a hold of. Let's raise it up in exuberant worship to our Lord God. Psalm 98 says, sing to the new Lord a new song for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. So here we go. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the heart and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blasts of ram's horns, with tambourines, with saucepans, shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Not 
greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. Good. 
The word wonder is defined as a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable. The song What a Beautiful Name It Is that we just sang describes Jesus' name as wonderful and I couldn't imagine a better word. Even though Josh did just say there were no words possible to describe Jesus in the English dictionary, I feel like wonderful does give it a good go. Jesus Christ is wonderful and I just want to encourage you as we close this time of worship to reflect on that word because our wonderful God has no rival or no equal and he is for us and he is not against us. He is amazing, admirable, beautiful and remarkable. Thank you so much to the worship team for a great time of worship and all the media guys that work so hard to put it all together. Thank you so much. Kids, don't forget to tune in to Mosaic Kids at 12pm after Mosaic Online. We have another jam-packed week full of so much fun just for you. Mosaic at 6 we'll be, back, we'll be back in September. We have been putting our creative hats on and we cannot wait to launch back soon. So please keep your eyes peeled. One event will be back again this year, but it's going online. You can gather friends and watch it in your garden and you can even set up your own camping experience. It's from the 28th to the 29th of August, streaming via YouTube. And for more information, follow the link below. And now it's time to see what has been going on in the life of Mosaic Church. Hi, my name's Lou Bowen, and I've come to tell you about my journey from my old past, which is the New Age, to Christ. Um, I was involved in the New Age for about 30 years, if not before, because I was very interested in spiritual matters, but it was the wrong spirit. And I, I was involved with um, spirit guides, meditation. I used to visit um, colleges to learn how it is to be a medium. I was involved with yoga, Reiki, Kalamuras, channeling. Um, there's, there's so many things out there that I was involved with um, over time. It was a very fascinating journey because I ended up with Jesus and, and I think that's the most important part of it, that I can see the difference between all the things I was involved with and where I am now with Jesus. And Jesus stepped into my life when I think I'd had enough and um, I actually called out to God to give me the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth and that's when the Holy Spirit started to work on me gently, guiding me to Christ. And when I found Jesus, he was in the kitchen, um, at home I was preparing for an angel group. I used to work with angels. So I, um, I tested my angels because now I know I had to and none of them passed the test. And on my website, because I have a website, which is www.lou-bowen.com, uh, www which the link will be at the end of this short film. Um, I tell you a lot more about all the things I was involved with and how Jesus got me out. 
But one thing I can say is that when I called out to God, he answered with his Holy Spirit and in the, um, in the, in the kitchen of my own home, I became born again because I accepted Jesus then and then, knowing that he was the truth and the way and the life. And that I actually felt the difference of his presence rather than the other Jesus that I was following that the new age has. So I could see um, the power of the Lord and how he kept me safe from the darkness that was now revealing itself to me after years of living with it and it pretended to be love and light. So thank you for listening. If you want to know more, please click on the link or um, go to that website. As we take the offering, I want to read a verse. I want to read verse 16 from Matthew 5. So don't hide your light, let it shine brightly before others, so that the commendable things you do will shine as light upon them, and then and then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. It's our responsibility as followers of Jesus to not hide our light, but to shine it bright for all to see, to set the example and to lead the way. As I'm speaking now, all the ways you can give are going to come up on the screen. Whether it be small or big, it's the action that counts and sets the example for all to see. And now it's my absolute pleasure, 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 pleasure to introduce this week's speaker, the beautiful and wonderful, see what I did there, Husna, sharing with us from Galatians 5. So hi everyone, my name is Husna Anderson and I'm one of the youth pastors at Mosaic Church Conventry. And today I'm going to focus on Galatians 5. And before I jump into the text, I just want to give a little bit of context in regards to Galatians and why it was written. Galatians was actually written by Paul and Paul proclaims the reality of our liberty in Christ's freedom is from the law and from the power of sin so that we can live freely and serve our Lord. Most of the converts and early leaders in the church were Jewish Christians who proclaimed Jesus as their Messiah. As Jewish Christians, they struggled with this dual identity and they were strict followers of the law. But their newfound faith in Christ invited them to celebrate a holy liberty. Galatians was primarily written to call believers back to the gospel. Paul wrote it to remind believers and ourselves today that the good news is for everyone, not certain groups or for certain people, but it's for every single human being. He also reminds us that salvation is by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ and nothing else. Becoming a Christian is no way based on our initiative or wise choice or, or good character. He reminds us in Galatians that we can only be right with God by believing in Christ Jesus. Paul actually says this through the outset of Galatians 5. And he says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. He died to set us free from a, a long list of rules and regulations. Not so that we can do what we want, because that would lead us back into slavery and, and into our own selfish desires. There's a saying that you can have whatever you want, but not everything is good for you. In this day and age, we need rules. I mean, look at COVID-19, for example. We had to follow rules and regulations in order for us to stay safe and in order for us to come out of the pandemic. But what Galatians is reminding us is trying to be saved by keeping the law and trying to be saved by grace is completely two different perspectives. Obeying the law in those times didn't make it easier for God to save them. All we need to do is accept the gracious gift that God has given us through faith. What this means is our deeds 
or our service must not be used to earn God's love. Why? Because you already have it. You already have God's love. Paul then goes on to say, and he poses a question here in 5.7. He says, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast causes the whole dough to rise. This means it only takes one person to infect all the others. This could be potentially a person at work or in college or university or even your mobile phone in terms of what we're watching and what we're feeding our minds. We can follow many things. I mean, take gangs, for instance. A lot of them want to allow you to do certain things in terms of initiation where it's taking someone's life or doing things that are against your natural morals and values in order to be accepted and fit in. But what God is saying to us is you are already accepted and all you have to do is believe in the one that he sent and that is Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us that we are called to be free and that we must serve one another and by doing that we must love our neighbour. When we're not motivated by love, we become critical of others. We stop looking for the good in them and we only see their faults. And as a Christian, it would be good to make a list of the positive attributes of that person. But then you might say, well, there's a problem here. <laughs> Listing positive um, attributes of that person is not going to help the situation that I'm in. Well, the advice the, the Bible gives is that it's better to address the issue rather than gossip or talk behind their back right? But to do this, we need to live by the Spirit. And it says in 516 in Galatians, so I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So what are those sinful natures? Well, Paul writes it down clearly in Galatians. He says, it's anything contrary to the Holy Spirit, sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, jealousy, fits of rage, selfishness, envy, drunkenness, to name a few. I encourage you to read it for yourself. People who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So in conclusion, in our world, in our world today, there are many lifestyles that are rife and those types of lifestyles that I mentioned are everywhere. And it's because in the world that we live in, those types of sins are glorified. But it reminds me of a scripture uh, in, in Romans 12 2, that do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And you will know God's will for your life. And Paul gives us a great example here. He tells us that in order to live a fruitful life, in order to live a, a free life in Christ, we must go by the fruits of the Spirit. And they are love, they are joy, they are peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against these, there are no law. Look, God is interested in every single area of your life not just your spiritual. He, 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 is in, he wants to be involved in your emotional, your physical, your intellectual, your vocational, to name a few. But to do this, we must understand that the Holy Spirit is the source of this and we must keep in step with it. And we must remember that we can't allow other people to determine our values or standards in every in any area of our life because you are free in Christ and to remain free we must remember to live daily it's a daily sacrifice to put those sins on the cross and to live in freedom and knowing that God is for you and not against you and when we live in that freedom 
people will notice and would want that freedom too. So be encouraged. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that I, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Perfect in all of your ways You are perfect
Thank you, Husna, for those incredible words of encouragement this morning and for taking us through Galatians 5 as we continue our journey through Galatians. Just before we bring the service to a close, I'm going to spend a moment in prayer. Father God, thank you for your words. Thank you for your words which have been shared to us through Husna this morning, Father God. And I thank you that you meet us exactly where we're at, Father God. And this morning, whether we need comfort, whether we need to be challenged, whether we need blessing, whatever it is, Father God, that you will pour that out upon us. Father God, I pray that your words will go far and beyond what we could ever imagine through the reach of Mosaic Church, through the online world, Father God. I thank you that we can reach so many more and so many more people will hear your incredible words and hear about Jesus Christ, our God, and saviour. Amen. If any of you do have prayer requests, please log in to mosaicchurch.co.uk slash pray and there you can put all your prayer requests and I can promise you that there'll be people on hand to pick those up and join you in prayer um, as we spiritually take on the things that you are facing and whatever it is that you are facing. So please, if you do have a prayer request, mosaic.co.uk forward slash pray. If you're new to church this morning, if this is your first time or if you'd like to get connected, please also get in touch with us. Go on our website, follow us on Instagram, However it may be, message us, get in touch. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to hear more about you. And we'd love to get you more connected to Mosaic Church. It has been an incredible morning and we are so pleased that you have gathered with us. And we look forward to seeing you again virtually online next Sunday at 11. Have a great, have a blessed, have an incredible week.